Hello everyone, Kevin here with this week's NOYC Godcast, where we bring you wacky wisdom from God's Word. In this week's episode, we're kicking off our annual series that we call Nuggets of Knowledge. In this episode, we'll be diving into why it's important to read our Bibles regularly. So in this episode, I would like to talk about why it's important for Christians not only to read the Word of God, but to study it as well. In the world of Christian list doers, many Christians read their Bible as if it's a chore that they must do. They set aside a time to read their Bible, and once they read it, they go about their life without giving a second thought as to what they just read that can become habit forming and have no real impact on the daily life because they are not seeking meaning in what they read. Mm -hmm. Reading our Bible and not putting what we just read into our lives is dangerous as as it's possible that we become numb to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Our Bible reading should have purpose as we're seeking to learn something. By studying God's Word, it gives us a deeper connection to Him. We come to a better understanding of who He is, who He says He is, and who He tells us He is. Mm -hmm. Bible reading should be personal, as we are literally reading what God has to say about our lives and the world we live in. The Bible is our GPS of life. Mm -hmm. In the past, I personally struggled reading the Old Testament, mainly because I really didn't, I didn't understand the need of what I thought was unnecessary violence mm-hmm. because I had vo- avoided reading it for myself. I let others tell me what God was saying and why he was doing what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Fast forward to today, and after reading many books of the Old Testament, I have a better understanding of God's will, and it honestly helps me to know him better. So as important as Bible reading is, we need to study the Bible in our walk with Christ. I found myself wondering what that looks like to others. So I'm blessed to have four other people here with me to share insight on what Bible reading strategies work for them. So guys, what helps you all not just read your Bibles, but to study out what you read from God's Word? I know Rachel's just chomping at yeah, the Rachel bit. should have to go first. I think it's unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, is it called here? Mm-hmm. So well, I, I hear it. I hear the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> is it you should here? get that checked out. <laughs> uh, so I, we, I typically follow the... H-E-A-R. So the well, the other thing that Bible uh, comprehension yeah isn't there isn't the word strategic, strategic somewhere in strategic, there strategic it got dropped oh okay but no sure. longer strategic. too hard for everybody to remember <laughs> <laughs> okay so we read the same three to four chapters every day for like a week mm-hmm. and then um but to make sure we're getting stuff from we do h e a r that's how you, that's spell, how you spell that and mm-hmm. it's highlight explain apply and respond. And so after you read it, you read all of the chapters, and then you kind of go through and say what spoke out to you um, each day. But then on top of that, because even that, like, depends on the verse or the chapters we're reading, like, I like to kind of do a mixture of what we've talked about before. Like, I'll listen to it some days. I'll read it. I'll read the commentary some days. Like, I just, like, every day I try to do a little different to get mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. points of it. And so that's 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 what I do. Yeah. Me? All right. I'm next. Um, so I've talked about this before, but I'm very much so. I have reading comprehension issues. Like I have a hard time. If <laughs> yeah, that's what I was. Saying. I can't even say that word. So yeah, statically tree. Statically tree. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to that tree? <laughs> I've never been able to say that word ever correctly in my life. <laughs> say that one more time. Statically tree. <laughs> It's just one. Of, it's like audio. That's the best thing I've. No, that's way better than audio. Like that's the best thing I've heard all day. Actually, one more time. Jacob, statically true. <laughs> Jacob said he's like it. Actually, sounds like it's harder to say that. I can say that. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so that's why they got rid of it for the comprehension thing because I couldn't say it. No, but um, I have a hard time. If I read something, I don't get it. Like if I look at it, I'm just, it just so I have to listen to things. And so a lot of times I'll have my Bible and so I have the audio and I have the you know visual right in front of me because I will be thinking about other things or I just yeah. won't be grasping it. So I um, listen to the audio while I'm reading. Um, I just recently got a journaling Bible, mm -hmm. so I really like that just to be able to write down some things yeah. like, and it's not even like big things. It's like somebody, the meaning of somebody's name or like yeah. just it, like writing it down, just kind of cements it in your head a yeah. little bit better. Um, also, I don't get to do this all the time because uh, Jacob's not always home, but, and it probably annoys him, but like when I'm sitting there reading and I find something funny or just interesting, I like to like say it out loud to him because mm -hmm. saying it out loud actually, again, like kind of cements it in. Yeah. And I, like I just like having that discussion yeah. about things. Um, but yeah, just that. And I also like to just use the, what is it? The blue letter Bible mm -hmm. app and just different things. Like, so you can like look at just cross, cross referencing just different things. But yeah, I, that's what I do. I'm going to wipe my tears from that word. <laughs> the tickly tree. <laughs> so funny. You've known me for how long you didn't I've know that? I've never heard you say that word before. But probably because I just avoid it. That's <laughs> wonderful. That is so wonderful. <laughs> that's great. Um, so... I I think I've beat this drum many times on this podcast, but I make it a, a habit to change up my habit in my Bible yeah. reading. Mm -hmm. um, I am convinced. So so kind of to Kevin's point on the podcast here today, when you become numb to the Word of God, it basically is not. It doesn't count. Yeah. It's not worth anything. Mm -hmm. And really, that's what a Pharisee became in Jesus's day. It was someone they they read the Bible, they had it memorized. They had the first five books completely memorized mm -hmm. by age like five mm -hmm. or ten or twelve. Like it was a yeah. very young age. They had it memorized. They knew the scriptures, but they became numb to the application of the scriptures. Yep. And so I'm convinced that that is really the same error that a lot of Christians today fall into, mm -hmm. including this one right here. And so I'm very regularly changing up what I do. Um, when I find myself comfortable or just find myself not being challenged or changed, mm -hmm. I switch it up. So um, one of my favorites is to just just read the scripture. Mm -hmm. um, and then I usually read Warren Wearsby's commentary. He's mm -hmm. my snuggle bunny. Yeah. Uh, and so I just read. I just think he's just a vast, vast wealth of knowledge and understanding. I just think I highly recommend his commentary to anybody who can mm -hmm. get their hands on it. Uh, but I read that along with. So usually I'll read the chapter. I'll read what Wearsby says, and then I'll go back and reread the chapter. Yep. And usually, I'll I write my Bible. Mm -hmm. It's not a journal Bible. Yeah. I have one of those too. Uh, but I will like I'll underline certain words or yep. circle certain words or draw arrows, like making it more come to life and not words on a page only. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's like emphasis here or like this is the reason he's saying this, and like this is actually this, mm -hmm. or even cross references. Like I I remember Jesus saying that in this place and so i'll look up oh jesus is right. quoting isaiah mm -hmm. you know what i mean so just making it like god has this plan and it's applicable to me um i mean sometimes i'll write it like if i find a warning this past week in isaiah i was reading um and i had found a note that i'd wrote in there last year when i was reading in isaiah mm -hmm. and it said may uh may the church not repeat this mistake and mm -hmm. so like just things that grab my attention and yep. uh are, are easy to go back and look at um, I have done the H E A R. I did that before. It was mm -hmm. cool. Uh, <laughs> I've got the H E A R Bible, um, and so um, I, I really enjoyed that. And I like that because that when I do that, that challenges me. Like I have to respond. Mm -hmm. yes. So like there is no easy out. Like yeah. with weird speed, it's like oh that's nice weird speed, and then I go about my day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Good job. with with this, it's like you have to respond at the end. And so like I and it starts with prayer. Uh, and so I usually very much start every time I open my Bible, I'm praying to the Lord mm -hmm. like. God, I can't understand this book. Yep. I don't have a spiritual bone in my body. Like I have nothing to bring to this table. Could you give me your understanding? Could you do the work? Um, and would you challenge me? Would you change me? I think that's really kind of the underlying problem with, with most Christians when they read their Bible is they're reading it a, because they have to, where's a mm -hmm. box to check or B um, just habitually yeah. and not no intention of changing. Yeah. I think right. really it's a heart thing. Like if you want to succeed at your Bible reading, come with an, a tender heart, yep. like actually pray, God, would you hurt me with this Bible of yours? <laughs> would yep. you beat yep. me up and show me where I'm wrong? Show me where I'm unlike you. David says, you know, search me, oh God, and show me. And so I think that really is the first step to enjoying mm -hmm. and actually wanting to read your Bible. Is it actually changing you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think um, like earlier I mentioned, it's like a GPS mm -hmm. for our life. Okay. So like there's like a running joke. I'm not one of these men, but men don't ask for directions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I feel as though that's where like many Christians are. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Oh, I'm going to read Luke. I've read it 13 times already. Mm -hmm. And they're just like skipping some sentences yeah. because yeah. they're like, I know what this said. Like they're yeah. not, they're not gaining anything. Yeah 
from reading it. So that would be like if you got in your car and turned your GPS on and didn't move your car. Like, yeah. what yeah. was the point of the GPS? Because, like, your position didn't change in your mm-hmm. car yeah. and your position doesn't change spiritually unless you're getting something out of your Bible. Um, I kind of fall into a mixture of all three of you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I usually listen, only listen to it the mm-hmm. first time, okay? Because um, in my Bible app, the guy that reads it, I think does a really good job of like his voice infliction. So you really like understand yeah. what he's saying. Because sometimes like I'm reading the Bible and I'm like, oh, wait, that was a question. Let me go back and reread that yeah. again. So after I understand like what's what, then I go back and just read it, mm. and then I read it and listen to it, and then I like start the whole thing mm-hmm. over again, and I'm constantly like wondering like what am I supposed to be getting from yeah. this, yeah. and if I ever get done and be like, oh, huh, yeah, well I just spent you know 30 minutes reading my Bible and mm-hmm. yeah. didn't know anything, then obviously I didn't read the Bible, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I just read a bunch of words. I think of uh, I think it's Paul that writes. Is it Paul or is it Hebrews? I, I think it's Paul. <laughs> it says something along the lines of like, it's like a man looking in a mirror and walking away and forgetting what he looks like. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's um, mm-hmm. first John, I think. Um, and so um, I think that's how most Christians are with their Bible. Mm-hmm. I think that like we read it in the morning. Like I don't, I read mine in the morning. I don't want to read yours. Yeah. Um, and so I think a lot of times we read it and then we go about our day and it has no impact on our daily lives. Yeah. Right. And I know personally, that's one of the things I really struggle with is like, I enjoy my time in the morning, but it really is totally unapplicable to the rest of my life. Yeah. So one of the things I've started doing, um, and I don't do it very faithfully, I need to do better at it, but one of the things I've started doing is like, I'll read in the morning and then when I when I come into the office, I'll open my Bible to the same place I read that mm-hmm. morning and just have it open in front of me. And like, if I catch a breath, if I have an urge to pull up my phone and scroll on something, mm-hmm. I'll just go back and, and have my eyes on that verse again. Um, if there's really a verse specifically that stands out, I'll write that on a sticky note and put that right in front of me for the day. Like that may not move mountains, yeah. but it does kind of make it longer like it yeah, med- mm-hmm. meditating. Yeah. well and it's yeah. meditate and it's a way of abiding like yep. and to me it's a way of making that go um and impacting our uh, daily lives and so right um so if you don't fill your mind with god's word mm-hmm. okay the world is going to fill you mm-hmm. with yeah. their what, what they think like if, if you don't fill your head with god satan's going to be like oh empty spaces let me yep. <laughs> yep. let I'm me fill you there. up there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know what i mean so if we just stay full on god's word there's yeah. really no room Mm-hmm. for anything else. So um, thank you all for... Can I add another question to the <laughs> time? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you okay. go first. Like, where do you guys... How do you know... Like, where do you start and where do you... Mm. Like, do you just, like, Genesis out? Or do you start with the New Testament? No, I don't or rip do Genesis you... out. That's important. Like, <laughs> you should leave that <laughs> no, in there. I mean, Genesis down. Could like, you imagine ripping that whole book out? Like, that would be, have some strength maybe, in your head. That would be a lot. <laughs> Unless you have one of the spiral-bound ones. Right, just... That wouldn't be too hard. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, where do you start? Like, do you do Genesis on or do you, like, start in the New Testament? Like, how do you guys go about, like, where you start? So do you mean, like, personally or, yes. like, if we're going to point well, someone Well, if else? you point someone out, I would do the beginning, like so the Gospels. I all, yes. Yeah, so I always read, like, I beat this drum all the time. I do this at LifeWise. Mm-hmm. I do this at camp. If you are, like, I don't read the Bible, but I want to start, start in the book of John. Yeah. Always start in the book of John. I would even say go through the book of John like five times before you start any other books or yeah. even think about any other books. Yeah. Always go to John. Yeah. Um, I beat that drum like I, I'm very adamant about that. But it's personal. But personally. Mm-hmm. So I do. I didn't mention this. I do uh, my own Bible reading plan mm-hmm. where it's a different section of the Bible each day. Oh. So Mondays are Genesis through. Let's see if I can get this right. I think it's Genesis through. It's the law. So Genesis mm-hmm. through Deuteronomy. Yeah. Tuesdays are Joshua through Ruth. So it's the history. Mm-hmm. Wednesdays are the poetry. So yep. it's um, Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Song of Solomon. Mm-hmm. Thursday is the prophets. So all uh, Isaiah through uh, those. And then um, <laughs> Friday, <laughs> Isaiah whatever Isaiah the Prophet. last one is, yes. Malachi. Yes. Um, and then Friday is the gospels. Yep. So the four gospels. And then Saturday is um, the epistles. So yeah. Acts through revelations um and what i like i've done that for a long time that I actually sounds very interesting our pastor yeah, started doing that yeah. as well um mm-hmm. and i stole that from nathan uh <laughs> but i really like that um but what, what i like about that is it does keep it fresh yeah mm-hmm. but it keeps it fresh while also connecting the dots mm-hmm. so like um i don't know like when i if i were to just sit down and read through the book of isaiah i'd be like 
I did that weirdo. Weirdo. Like, yeah. oh, I did that weirdo. But recently. because I'm like coming back to it, I almost appreciate it more. Yeah. Like I'm connecting dots, but there's enough space there to appreciate. Like I don't yeah. know. I really like the difference. It's like when you watch also, several shows at the time. Yeah, you just you, need you, a break. Yeah. You need to put something else yes. in there. But also, I love that I, because I'm reading in the Old Testament and the New Testament at the same time. I can see what God's doing mm. in both Bad. places. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know how often I'll read something here and it'll be quoted here. Mm. I'm like, oh. Like he's talking about that. They would have known that. So yeah. like I yeah. that's what I've done that for years. Um, I really enjoy that, yeah. but I you do. just read wherever the paper yeah, tells you. The paper <laughs> says, that's where I, go. I usually try to do it in a line, but I think that like I've been wanting to do something more like that because it is it, it becomes monotonous a little bit right, right, when you're yeah. Re- Leviticus. Levit- yeah, like, Leviticus is a little it's bit hard rough. not to the best of Christians. It's hard not yeah. to just get numb or bored with it. Yeah. But if you're always every day is somewhere different, it, yeah, yeah, I find it helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of different. Uh, you had a question. That was my question. Oh, okay. Do you jo- have a question? Josh had a question. Josh, Josh asked this question. Qu- uh. um, so my question, did you, that you didn't, okay, you, you answered. <laughs> I didn't want to <laughs> like move on past that question. <laughs> um, so let's talk Bible reading with kids. Mm. Mm. Mine likes to eat books. <laughs> <laughs> I have no doubt of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so yours might be a little young at this point. I would say like when Juliet was that age, like we were reading her storybooks. Yeah, we had we like have the kids flip Bible. Board. Yeah, like the flip um, cardboard so ones. we did that. But Julia got to the age like she's beyond that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we've now have the um, one big picture Bible, story Bible, the yellow Bible. I don't know what oh, it's called. Oh, the one that oh. they all have? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what, what that's called. Um, so we're going through that. But like that actually is the Bible. Like mm-hmm. it's not a kid's reiteration. Yeah. It's not stories. or pic- There are some pictures, but it's like it actually is Bible Bible. Yeah. So we're going through John. Mm-hmm. No, that's a surprise. Yeah. Um, and so like right now we're in Jesus, in, Jesus is teaching um, in the upper room. And so it's just a lot of doctrine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um and so, like, it's it's easy when you're doing stories with them. Yeah. Like, all right, baby, what did we learn? And, like, she's telling me. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean mm-hmm. for us? But when you get to doctrine, it is it is difficult teaching to the kids. But I still think it's all the more important. Yeah. And so, like, even Jesus is saying, no, I'm in the Father and the Father's in me. And, like, the world will hate you because it hated me and all these things. And, like, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm shrinking the, the amount of content because yeah. of the type of content yeah. mm-hmm. each night. Um, but to me, I don't see any reason why she can't understand that on her level yeah if she can understand everything you know a video game or yep. school yep. or a video or movie teaches her you know what mm-hmm. i mean because right. i think some parents like they're like no they, let's just skip to the feeding the five thousand yeah, let's no. skip past the yeah. f- six chapters here yeah. um and so i don't know like like what do you it's do or what rocks. do you thought or how do you explain how do you make sure they're getting it how do you gauge like what are your thoughts for well, the curriculum that we do we homeschool i don't assume most people know that it has us reading Bible every morning for their like history class, and so this year we used to just read it as part of the thing. Now I we make hot chocolate and I make uh, coffee. <laughs> we sit around the dining room table and like that's how we start a morning every morning. It's become really special. I really like it. We'll each take a verse and keep going around so we read it all, and then we'll discuss it a little bit afterwards. And then, but I also have them doing um, their own. Like I found a kids Bible plan thing. It actually kind of is. It does. Um, they like every day they read Genesis and then. A New Testament as well. Mm-hmm. So they're reading both. It's like a chapter each or something. But because I want them to know how to study it on their own as well. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. they have like a journal mm-hmm. that they're supposed to write in after they, yeah. they read it. And then we try to discuss. We always talk about what they've learned through junior church and different things mm-hmm. too. But yeah. I think it's important to have the family that we do family worship at home too. Mm-hmm. But I think that I want the boys are a little older than Juliet. Yeah. Yeah. So they're old enough to be able to do that on their own. I want yeah. them to read it and then like, okay, what did I learn or what questions do I have? And sometimes they'll come and ask us questions and stuff. But yeah. yeah. That's what that's what we do. I think uh, <clears throat> there's a few things for those who are at home. Mm. I think that oh, how do I say this without breaking eggshells? Um, All the eggshells. I think it's important to. So I don't know how to say this without saying this. <laughs> if you have eggshells, you have any broken the egg. What? what? <laughs> if you have eggshells, you've already cracked the egg. Like you don't call an egg an eggshell. Um. It's just an egg. It's when you crack it. And then you have eggshells. Yeah, like you're walking Keep on eggshells. Been spilled. Just say it. Yeah. Just say it. <laughs> <laughs> the cat's out. Of the One of the things that I think is so. So you have the dumbed down kids' Bibles. Yes. Mm-hmm. Those are I think appropriate for time. Yeah. Once like, they get like to school little... age, like they are going to school, they are learning from textbooks. Oh, they are yeah. learning. Yeah. They need the Bible. However, I don't know that going straight for the 1800 mm. KJV. Yeah. Thou shalt, how now, brown cow book, <laughs> is the most edifying yeah. thing. If your goal is for the word of God to get down in your child's heart. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, again, we use that yellow Bible. Um, I don't even know what that is, but it, it, I know what, I know what it is. <laughs> Baby, what is that yellow book over there in the corner? <laughs> uh, um, He's afraid of it. I know what it is, but like, so we read it, but I, 
to me, it's important to, even as you're reading the Bible, I don't want to say dumb it down, but make sure there's comprehension, so, not just words for the sake of hearing words. Yeah. Like that's what I'm trying to say. So I was going to say, like when we do, um, we do the D6 program mm-hmm. through for, um, Sunday school, like we have, I read the verses, but then also inside of it's paraphrased yeah. inside the actual yeah. thing. And, and like, I think that makes more sense absolutely. to them than, especially the age group that I'm yeah. teaching, in Juliet, yeah. and like them, the, you know what I mean? That, <laughs> Help me out here. <laughs> like that age group, like they need to yeah. paraphrase almost. Yes. The these and the thous are not going to always yeah. hit. You mm-hmm. want to get the main content. And like, don't get me wrong. I think it's valuable to yes. read them the Bible, yes. but I don't think you can stop there. And I think no. that's probably yeah. where a lot of parents and families fail is that they're like, all right, we did the Bible thing. Yeah. We read it. They have to get it. Yep. And so explaining right. what they've read, yep. re-paraphrasing yep. it. Um, you don't have to re-paraphrase if you're paraphrasing. But nonetheless, <laughs> make sure they get it, yeah. say it in a way that they get it. But then also, like I said with Juliet every night, I always ask her, all right, so what does that mean? Like, what is Jesus wanting from us? Like, yep. what are we doing mm-hmm. here? Because it's great he said that to them then. But yep. like, that has to mean, he wouldn't have told us now if it weren't for us. And yes. so how do we live this out? How do we do this? How can you do this at school tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it kind of goes back to that numbing thing you were yeah. talking about. Yeah. Um and so, yeah, I, don't I think know. that's honestly the more important when you're talking about kids, you don't want them to just have knowledge. You want right. them to be able. And so the application of that, that's the like it's important for them to read the Bible, but it's also the like more important to be able to apply those things. Absolutely. I think it's important to have those conversations like outside of the mm-hmm. like, Bible so if time you do yours at night or whatever, like having those conversations at night, like Kason, he's the kid probably gets it from me, but he's constantly like, I just can't. I'm just the worst kid in the world. I can't do anything like if he has a bad mm-hmm. day and I've yelled at him a lot he is just like I, it's because i'm the worst kid ever and i'll be like yeah you are I'll be like you are a bad kid and i'm like and i'm a bad mom and dad's a bad dad like we can't do this on our own yeah. but then i take him back to the bible and yeah. i explain the verses and yeah. i'm like this is how we live it out it's not just yep. you know you can't you can't do it on your own and so i think having those conversations outside of the bible time yeah. and just it being a normal conversation constantly going on i but, think you should go <laughs> I think that's why it's really important as... <laughs> I like, think it's time for you like, to leave. I was like, why is he pointing? <laughs> um, no, I think it's just really important. That's where, like, as parents, it's really important that we're showing that yeah. in our lives. Yeah. So not only are they seeing you read Bible with them, but you're also, they're also seeing not, that you're just forcing them to apply things to yes. your their life, but yep. your life as well. And that's what I was going to say was, like, it is very, especially with this age, it's very much, there's pushback from her not wanting to do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of parents are going to bow down to them and say, oh, it's more headache than it's worth let's just not do this and that would be the easy thing to do Mm -hmm. but it goes back to what kevin said earlier wherever there's spaces the the devil the world will fill them and that's Mm -hmm. all the more true with our kids who can't protect themselves oh yeah Yeah. and so when Mm -hmm. you if you are choosing not to have family devotions if you are choosing Mm -hmm. not to read your bible with your children what you are literally saying is satan they're yours fill them up with what you got you're telling the world they're open game help Mm -hmm. yourselves what horrible of a parent would you have to be? Yeah. Like that's like strapping dynamite to your child, sitting them in the middle of the street yep. and telling traffic to just go full speed ahead. Like <laughs> it's danger. Like don't what do that. What does the dynamite have to do with I, it? I, I'm, trying to, I'm just trying to up the ante of danger. I thought you were like, like going to hand the people lighters. Like one way or another, they're doomed. <laughs> like it really is that <laughs> spiritually, <laughs> it is that paramount. Um, yeah. The Bible, like I, this is just, I'm just such a big proponent of this. But like you go back to uh, the Shema, which is Deuteronomy mm-hmm. six. Which is where D6 comes from. Yeah. Um, and, and and their whole emphasis in the Jewish belief system was the Bible is for all times, all parts of the day, yeah. all walks of life. And so they had they had the Bible strapped to their head, they had the Bible strapped to their hands, they had mm-hmm. it on the doorpost, they had it on their bed rail, they had it on their fence post. Mm-hmm. Everywhere they looked, everything they did, they were always talking and looking and directing towards the Bible. Yeah. And we should be doing the same thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um Josh the book of Joshua, he says that the Lord tells Joshua to meditate upon it day and night. And so mm-hmm. that should be our lives. Like we should be constantly pouring into our children in car rides, mm-hmm. in the grocery store. Yep. while we're watching TV, well, everything we're doing, we should be reiterating, this is what God's word says yep. because we are God's people. This is where our priority lies. Yeah. Yep. But also I think that like, for my kids anyway, like they're not, like if I let them choose, they're never gonna choose to pick up that Bible right. on their own. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Like yeah. that's where like we have I to be feel parents. bad. Yeah. Well, like I feel <laughs> yeah. bad. Like it feels like that makes it a chore because it's on right. their to do list. Like right. they have to get it done. Mm-hmm. But that's where you have to be having those conversations yeah. to make sure like we're doing this because we want to grow closer to Jesus. Right. But like if I don't tell them to do it, then they're just not. Yeah. And that's why I have that conversation very regularly with Juliet, and, and I would usually say like we are God's people, and so we do what God says. Mm-hmm. But also like, do you love Jesus? Because if you love Jesus, you want to spend time with her. Like it's the prayer, the same thing. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. like, if Mom and Dad didn't talk to you for a month, would you think that we loved you? No. 
Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you need to talk to Jesus if yeah. you love him. If you yeah. don't love him, that's another conversation. Completely. <laughs> but and the same with God's word. Like if you yeah. love him, you want to hear what he has yes. to say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, again, we have to recognize as adults, as parents, we have to be the adults. Yep. We have to be the parents. Yep. Kids are going literally. That's the point of being a kid is needing someone to be yep. to guide you. You have to mm-hmm. literally teach them how to eat everything. And like everything. Yeah. Like, so don't but don't bow down to their pushback. Like yeah. be the parent. Yep. 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 Good stuff. Good stuff, guys. Nuggets of knowledge. Nuggets of knowledge. Nuggets of knowledge <laughs> with barbecue sauce. Mm. Honey mustard. Honey, Honey mustard. Mayonnaise. <laughs> mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Do you see a balloon over there? <laughs> uh, so, um, again, thank you guys for your input. Yeah. Um, I just want to throw a little thing in there. Is, is that, like, as a uh, LifeWise teacher, mm. like, I think part of my job is to read the scripture and then like retell them in a way that they understand it Mm -hmm. without compromising the Bible. Like we just literally had this conversation where like there are just some things in the Bible. That's what God said and that's what he meant and he meant what he said. Mm -hmm. So you have no choice but to present it that way. way. You, You know what I mean? And I think a lot of times educators, parents, whoever is the adult in charge, they're like, ooh, they're not ready for that part. And if you take that part out, it lessens yeah. what you're trying to teach them. You know what I mean? Because you're avoiding the the stuff. Like I, I feel as though like uh, there are commandments, mm-hmm. okay, and then there's um we just said this word outside of here, like where the Bible doesn't specifically say it, but it's implied, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we tend to take the commandments. And, you know, water them down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And if something's implied, we're very like, this is what the Bible says, young man. You know what I mean? But the commandment, we're just like, "Eh, take it or leave it. You know, so which is really like a weird backwards mentality to take. Humans, man. (laughs) They're the worst. Humane. (laughs) So with all that said... This week's considerable quote comes from Psalms 56.4. And it's funny because I know you like this verse. I'm not going to say how I know you like this verse, but I know you like this verse. And Psalms 56.4 says, In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. Today's feature content is Thank God by Stars Go Dim. This week's trivia, what is genu? I'm sorry, last week's trivia, what is genuphobia? Genuphobia? It is D, the fear of knees. If you have that fear, would you call it an <laughs> experience? We, 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 we have questions. questions. <laughs> I don't really understand it. It was just, it was on there, and I seen that, and I'm like, that's a weird one. We're going to put that I still that think you there. should fear sinks more. But yeah. That's just me. Like garbage disposals? Yeah, yeah that is for terrifying. sure. Yeah, that is for sure. Anytime I've dropped anything down there, even if it's off, I'm yeah. like, mm, nope, yeah. that's going to stay down there, yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's gone. Well, I don't own one, so it's always someone else's anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So this week's trivia is how many different authors wrote the Bible? A, 35, B, 40, C, 45, or D, 50? Mm. This week's birthdays, Arlen Bradford, Kendall Fink, Isla... Pickle Simon. (laughs) Duh. Pickle (laughs) Simon, okay. Zeta Peck, Amelia Gamble... Braylon Turner, Ashley Puttick, Emma I I Craft, and Cooper Thompson. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, birthday, guys. guys. So uh, this week's question that we got from Mm. camp reads, how can I read the Bible correctly and make sense of the lessons the books are trying to teach me? Well... Watch this episode. Yeah, just, yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. Rewind and watch it again. Um, I, I think one key aspect that we didn't talk about is how the Holy Spirit mm. impacts our Bible reading. You know, mm. because without the Holy Spirit, yeah. we're just reading. You're you know, just getting knowledge. You're not actually doing anything. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would say seek the Holy Spirit. Yep. Along with everything that we said in this video. Yep. Yep. 
Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that's it for this week, guys. Don't forget to like, share, email us. What else do we do around right here? Comment. And, and <laughs> what please do the new comment. Age kids do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do the snappers do? <laughs> comment. And with that, we're going to say goodbye, guys. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. And, and so it's knees and the fear of kneeling. So I don't like like kneecaps touching. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> it's like fear of like someone like wore a little bit too short of a like a, of a capri and you're like screaming. I just this fear. <laughs> like, they have these though, so like what do they do? They just don't look at them. Maybe they were decapitated. No. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't see their knees <laughs> then. <laughs> they can't look at their knees if they don't have a head. You see what I did there? I see what I did there, but they don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, so you're not recording this beautiful content. It's the. <laughs> oh, good. You're welcome. It's, it always goes back to some leg being chopped off. It, it always really does. does. It's been a while. Yeah. yeah.